Uh, I did a lot of green light uh, vaporizations in the past, and with green light, it was possible to do uh, the operation almost alone. Huh? But with Holep, you need a lot of help. You need a lot of help. Maybe you can show them uh, that uh, we have the morselator uh, prepared in the uh, here, and uh, of course, the surgeon is going to perform the operation, but the support of the nursing staff is uh, it's very important. May I read the for favor? Okay, so we're going to we're going to change to the endoscopic image, I think. If if the quality is not uh, good enough, uh, you tell me. Sometimes we can focus uh, a little bit better. So, okay. So if you if you're watching here, we are approaching the sphincter area, and I think it's very important to protect this this sphincter area here. We can recognize the veromontanum, and we can recognize the edge of the sphincter here. And uh, as I said, this is not a specially large gland. It's a little bit enlarged, but not, not too, too enlarged. Let's have a look. The UOs are relatively close, relatively close to the, to the bladder neck, trabeculated bladder. This is the edema for, from the catheter. And I'm going to introduce the laser fiber. Huh? I'm going to work with a homium laser at uh, my, my favorite setting is to use two joules and uh, frequency that uh, can be 40, 50, depending on the, on the machine you use, all right? So typically when we did the original, uh, let's say, three-load technique, we would start doing incisions in the bladder neck straight ahead, but I'm going to recommend you to come down here and mark the limit of the sphincter. You see? This is what I call the white line. And it, it will serve, serve us as a reference uh, during the procedure, all right? So you don't want to get lost. So you want to mark uh, this, this uh, white line all around the sphincter and down to the apical area. And I, I, you will see how helpful it is later on to do the apical dissection. And what I'm trying to achieve with this is I'm trying to achieve a protection of the mucosa of the sphincter, you see? I want to protect. I don't want to be far away from the sphincter. I want to be relatively close, uh, but sometimes, you know, one or two millimeters is not such a relevant uh, difference, okay? So this would be the white line. I also like to prepare a little bit the posterior uh, fibers here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting the attachment of the apical prostate with the sphincter, you see, in the lower part near the vero montanum. And I will do the same thing on the other side. And you see why this is important in a moment. Huh? So this is the initial preparation. You know that uh, the plane is, is very easy to find near the vero montanum. So you can, you can put your scope here and push, you see, to do a, a little bit of mechanical dissection. You can push a little bit to the side until the, the plane is more or less uh, revealed, okay? You see that plane? So this is the advantage of the Wolf, uh, let's say, instrument that allows you to do this. And you see, when I put the instrument against the tissue, I still can see the tissue. With some other instruments, when you contact uh, the tip of the scope with the tissue, you cannot see the tissue because the telescope is touching the tissue. So. Here we are, okay, so at the beginning of the procedure, we already know where is the plane, okay? And now we can go, if you, are, if you prefer uh, to do a, a three-lobe technique, and we can choose uh, to do incisions. Huh? So let's start, for example, in this side. I'm going to start making an incision. To carry out these incisions, I would recommend you to try to make a V you know the letter V, the letter V, sorry. It has a pointy edge and stay in this pointy edge to uh, deepen the, the incision and to make only one incision. I wouldn't like to see two, three, four, five incisions, just one incision. 
And my, my recommendation is not to go all the way down at the beginning because you see the prostate is a little bit long and if you stay in the bladder neck and you, if you deepen the incision in the bladder neck first, you see, you stay here a little bit. Let's go in and see where is the UO. The UO is there, more or less. So what's going to happen is that we are only going to do like half of, a, of the incision, half of the incision. The depth is going to be, let's say, reaching the bladder neck fibers. Uh, reaching the bladder neck fibers here, you see. And when I want to continue with my incision, it gets, it, it is already much shorter, you know. So basically, when you do this uh, incision in two, in two parts, the initial part, the bladder neck part, and then you continue downwards, what, is, what you are achieving is that you are making a simpler incision, sometimes, especially when you are starting. So initially, you do the upper part, you know, the proximal part, and then you try to connect, and you try to bring this incision down, downwards, 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 uh, to where the plane is. Huh? You see, we ha already have the plane here, so, Here we have to continue. You know, one of the mysteries of this operation was when to stop with the incision. And I have to say that the mystery has been, uh, let's say, much more easy now when we can see the plane already here, you see? So instead of following the incision and trying to reach the level of the capsule without really being able to tell where is the capsule, what we're going to do is Let's see where is the, the V of the incision here. What we're going to do, what we're going to try to do is to bring the plane from, from below. So here is the good plane. So I'm going to continue with this incision from below. You see, this is good plane, good plane. You can see the good plane here. And then we can bring this depth upwards, all right? And then it's much more intuitive and much more simple. All right, these are uh, tips and tricks that I picked up on the way. Although you have to say again, hello. I cannot hear you very well, but uh, I see someone has joined the conversation. Okay, so you see initially we have we have achieved to do an incision that goes from the bladder neck towards the plane here. Huh? Here is the Vero Montanum. Where is it? Here, you see? So by localizing the plane at the beginning of the operation, now we know uh, where the plane is coming. Another tip is to cut a little bit uh, the bladder neck towards the midline, all right? So here, once you have completed your incision, if you cut a little bit towards the midline like this, then the nucleation of the middle lobe is going to be much simpler. All right, so let's go to the other side. Let's start the other incision. So instead of going all the way down, 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 I'm going to stay here. I can hear your voice, but I cannot understand. Someone is talking Brazilian, I think. Maybe if, if you don't hear me, maybe you can write your questions in the chat and then they will relay them to me. Okay, so this is the second incision, all right? I'm coming towards the UO, more or less, eh, in the direction of the UO. And initially, I'm doing the incision only in the proximal part, okay? Because this way, I can simplify, simplify a little bit when I want to continue the incision. So now from here to here, you see, it's a very short, it's a very short uh, way. Huh? So it makes life much easier if we can do the incision in two, in two parts. Uh, let's come up here, try to get inside the incision and then bring it down, down, down to try to connect here and there will be a point where we will find the plane that we developed near the Vero Montanum, which is around here. 
you see this is capsule huh? so again we will bring the incision upwards to the depth of the capsule huh? that's that's a way for someone who has no not a lot of experience to know where the limit of the capsule is more or less huh? okay so we keep on our incision this is the original bladder neck incision now I, I can come a little bit further down further up you see and this way we can get to a depth that looks like the capsule you see if you have the need to do it you can do a little bit of mechanical dissection just by connecting with the capsule and pushing up to find the, the proper plane all right so let's continue with our incision there we are coming up coming up coming up towards the bladder neck all right so this incision more or less uh, is uh, it's completed I wouldn't go you know very de deep at the beginning because we can correct also the depth when we see how how it's going again this is bladder neck and I'm going to do what I did in the other side which is to cut here towards the midline all right why is this important because it's going to simplify the middle lobe enucleation all right so it's just a little nick this is the UO here we are and now we go down to the Vero so now we have you see the plane in one side the plane in the other side and we're going to cut on top of the Vero to try to connect both planes like a smile huh? I'm going to smile from one side to the other side here we can try to use a little bit of the mechanical dissection or we can use the energy from the laser beam huh? you see if you if you want to dissect also you have to position yourself down here and make very very gentle uh, pushes to find where we are to find where we want to be and to follow the, the right plane huh so we connect from one side to the other side and continue with this dissection very gentle always huh? you don't want to go deep in the prostate also sometimes I like this this plane is a little bit flimsy so I'm going to put my fiber at 12 o'clock and I'm going to connect you see with energy because otherwise we're going to go a little bit deep there huh? I'm going to try to connect from side to side from side to side let's see trying to stay a little bit further up so we are very sure that we are in the right plane huh? in the in the in contact with the capsule all right so from side to side you see and the way we did these incisions uh, and the way we cut the bladder neck at the beginning we're going to leave a very small pedicle you see and the middle lobe is going to detach very very fast all right there we are and that's the end of the middle lobe that is the end of the middle lobe here maybe I will bring my fiber back again to six o'clock this is this is personal preference huh? and uh, many people always keep the fiber at six some people rotate the fiber I like to keep it either at six or at twelve So this, this would be a relatively simple way to do the middle lobe enucleation. Uh, you see now that we are finding this edge here and not over there because we cut already uh, this bladder neck at the beginning. So it's quite easy now to, to finalize this. That's completely free, completely free. And a little push, there we are. Uh, so that's the middle lobe area. Here we went a little bit into the capsule but not nothing to, to really to worry about let's uh, do some hemostasis but I think it's pretty good here and now of course if we go back you see this is a small adenomer adenomeric. maybe yeah so the next step is going to be to go to the 12 o'clock area to do the 12 o'clock incision but of course if you remember we already marked here at 12 o'clock you see this is the 12 o'clock mark here is the, the white line from the other side all right so now we perfectly know where is 12 o'clock where is the limit of the sphincter so we're not going to make mistakes there huh? so I'm going to come 
here under the 12 o'clock uh, region and I'm going to make a small cut that I'm going to bring towards my limit here again 12 o'clock and uh, bladder neck region and I will do this incision again until we see some fibers. A capsule of fibers anteriorly are a little bit more easy to, to distinguish. Uh, you can see the aspect of the of the fibers crossing from one side to the other. They're usually quite bright, shiny, shiny, shiny fibers. Alright? So here I would say there's another trick. And the other trick is when you are here at the bladder neck, let's cut a little bit towards the side. Alright? If you do this, you're going to make your life easier for later. It's very similar to what we did in the middle of region. So here we come to the 12 o'clock region near the capsule, you see, and we bring our incision a little bit towards the side, okay? So this is our 12 o'clock 12 o'clock incision here. And also, if we come down, 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 we can come out, almost come out. We can see the sphincter here, you see, and the white line, the white line we marked. So the next thing I'm going to try to do is to continue cutting over the white line. So this is a white line as, as I marked it. And then try to connect this white line all the way up. When you come up here, you have to continue horizontally because we want to go and connect connect with the 12 o'clock region, you see? Let's try to do this, 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 this dissection coming from below here. You see, coming up, coming up, coming up. Take your time, take your time. You can do this in one pass or you can do it in 30 passes, it doesn't matter, huh? And then when you come towards 12 o'clock, we have to join, join with the incision we made before, huh? So here, and this is the most difficult part of the operation. Here, always the apical liberation. But here you see this is a 12 o'clock incision we made. And now we can come around, you see, we can come around the apex. We come out again. Uh, you see this is apical tissue. We can follow the line all the way up here. Uh. So now we're going to try to release this lobe following this plane. My advice is that you try to use the energy, let the energy do the work, and move a little bit uh, dynamically from side to side. Don't stay too long in the same spot because you don't want to deepen in the capsule. You don't want to go very deep. Let's see, that looks like tissue. But you, you want to uh, also make very wide uh, lines like this, you see, going from side to side keeping oriented, keeping oriented. This is going to be the lower aspect, you see? So let the energy do the work of developing the plane. If you are in doubt, remember that you can use the tip of the scope. But if you have a good uh, visibility, if you have a good progression, if you have good hemostasis, then it becomes relatively simple. It's, it's a piece of cake. Huh? Here we're coming. Let's see if we can go all the way towards the 12 o'clock incision we made. You see, we want to release everything here. There we go. And there's a nodule here, so we have to take it out. This one here. Coming up, coming down. It's really a very simple uh, movement, trying to follow the capsular plane. Some prostates uh, show you the way very clearly, some others are a little bit more difficult, but uh, you have to judge when you are dissecting the plane, you have to judge if uh, you can go a little bit deeper, if you can correct or not, if you're going too deep, you know. Sometimes the plane will tell you exactly where, where to go, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Huh? So. But if you are patient and if you're careful, there shouldn't be any major problem, major accident or anything. So here we're coming towards, again, towards 12 o'clock. You see, this is the 12 o'clock incision we made. 
12 o'clock coming around again 12 o'clock following the contour of of the capsule letting the plane dissect for you and coming all the way around towards the other side so now the, the lateral lobe is uh, detaching very nicely it's better to try to carry a single perfect line of attack perfect plane but sometimes uh, it's not easy so you have to adapt to what you're finding this looks like a very good plane you see it's detaching very nicely with the energy also it's important i think to make uh, good hemostasis as you go huh? so here i'm coming down 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 this is maybe a little bit deep and i want to keep the line a little bit higher so as long as you don't go too far you see you can correct and nothing really happens uh, you don't want to go very very deep in one place because you were not careful and that's why i like to to move the fiber from side to side so i don't allow it to stay too long in the same spot deepening uh, deepening the incision so here again classic technique uh, three lock technique but you saw that we developed the apical plane we separated the sphincter from the apex before starting the dissection in the classical technique you uh, actually dissect the lateral lobe and you leave the apex for the end that's why i think the apex suffers a little bit more with the classic uh, uh, approach and uh, that might explain the, the post-operative stress incontinence we simply do not see post-operative stress incontinence only only very 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 rarely huh? so here is uh, 12 o'clock of course there, there comes a moment when we are going to find the bladder neck itself you see so in this in this uh, moment when we come to the bladder neck we have to cut the bladder neck huh? also circumferentially but here the plane is detaching very nicely very nicely let's see where we are this is nice I don't know how good is the quality of the image you're seeing I'm trying to record the whole procedure so we can send them the whole procedure in better quality if you want and then maybe the uh, representatives from Richard Wolf can give it to you huh? so this would be bladder neck already you see here so I'm coming down, coming down, coming down, and coming around, huh? Coming around, trying to follow the, the lateral plane all the way up. Let's see. This is the lower aspect. This is the, the plane that was a little bit deep, and so we are nearly, nearly finishing here, huh? So again, we are approaching the, the bladder neck here. You see, this is bladder neck now. So we have to cut the bladder neck circumferentially also around the adenoma and try to find, you see, the nice plane. As I told you before, I usually like to do more the in block technique and I have a lot of videos in uh, YouTube. So if you look in my channel in, in YouTube by my name, you will be able to see procedures like this, but uh, with the other technique. But I have to, I, I have to agree that the classic technique is, is quite well known. Look at this, look at the apex. You see the sphincter's mucosa is perfectly preserved. We, pr we preserved everything, huh? and this is the important aspect. Okay, so now we have the other uh, lobe. We have the other lobe, this is 12 o'clock, and we have the white line. You see, this is a little bit of the sphincter here. Our white line was, was here, you see, so I'm going to deepen a little bit this cut in the white line and I'm going to follow the contour of the sphincter from below towards the anterior part. I'd rather do it with the fiber at 12 o'clock, so here you see I'm coming up a little bit and staying here. What I want to do is I want to reach the anterior aspect from below, like that, you see carefully coming up but instead of going all the way here I could go much more deep here you see this is the classical way and then come up without looking 
at the sphincter, I want to look at the sphincter first. You see here, I know the tissue is white, so we've been there before, so there's no danger for the sphincter. Huh? And here I'm coming upwards towards 12 o'clock, coming upwards and already connecting with the 12 o'clock incision I made before. Huh? Let's come here, almost, almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there, okay. Then, you see, now I have done the apical release, the apical release, this is coming towards, let's say 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, I want to reach this point, you see the 12 o'clock area here, and I want to follow the circumference, the, the contour of the capsule, you see, to remove all the tissue around. Huh? There's a bleeder there, but let's see. So again, apex, and uh, we are going to replicate exactly what we did from the other side. Oh, I cannot hear you very well. I hear someone speaking, but I, I cannot hear you very well. Okay, so there we are. You see coming down, 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 and trying to connect. Una pregunta, sí? Dime. Always high power when energy and dirt snap. Ah, okay, I'm using 240 now. Huh? 240, so 80 watts. 240, it's perfect for, for enucleation. You can do 250 to 60, depending on the machine you, you have. I, I really think you can work with low power. But you know, low power makes the procedure a little bit more difficult. I think if you're going to start your experience, my recommendation would be to use a little bit higher power because higher power provides a little bit better coagulation, I think. And especially when you're going to do very large glands, I, I prefer to use a little bit higher power, not, I mean, we can work with uh, energy settings that go from 30, 36 watts, you know, like uh, 215, 218, 220. Uh, you can do the operation with uh, surprisingly low energy, but you have to work in a, good, uh, in a good setting, in a good situation, something that is comfortable for you. You see here, for example, the capsule looks a little bit thinner, so I'm going to correct a little bit, you see, the, the direction of the dissection. So, you have to judge, uh, during the operation, you have to judge how deep you're going and how deep you want to go. And just keep on the edge, keep on the good, on the good plane. And really it's not so, it's not such a difficult operation. Now we are about to finish the, the enucleation phase. And uh, you see this, this, this energy allows me to develop the plane very safely and also to deposit uh, some energy on the, on the tissue, so it provides uh, reasonably good hemostasis. Huh? Of course, we will check for hemostasis at the end, but I think it's nice to have a little bit more power than what the consoles, the low power consoles can give you. you know? If you have a 50 watt laser, many times you can only work at 40 or 30, 36 continuously, you know, these lasers do not uh, support continuous lasing like, like we are doing. One of the nice things that you, you have seen is that I don't stop almost, huh? I, I stopped only to, 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 to change from lobes, but you see my action with the laser is, is almost continuously. That's why we can complete these procedures relatively fast. You know, you only stop strategically, but stopping is the rare thing in, during the operation. Most of the operation the laser is activated so if, if you buy a very uh, low power console I think it can be a problem sometimes they don't uh, help you they, they, they stop you have to reinitiate unlike that so I would say that you want more than 60 watts I think yes questions oh this is a 30 degree lens huh? I think you can also work with 12 but uh, this is our, this is what we usually do, huh? 30 degree lens, what we usually use. Huh? And you see, we are completing now the dissection of the lateral lobe 
you know what's happening? The low, lateral lobe is pushing forward, you see? So we are getting to see the, the bladder neck. And I can go all around, all around the bladder neck like this, coming up huh, towards the limits. So really a piece of cake operation, I think. Also, for those of you who don't do Holeb yet, I, I would say there's nothing so rewarding as to do Holeb. You know, the patients are super happy. These are the happiest patients I, I see. Yeah? The, the, <coughs> the patients that uh, undergo a, a whole new nucleation. So there we are. I think the nucleation is finished. There's still a small bridge. Uh, sorry, my water inflow came out. My water inflow came out. That's why the visibility está muy lejos la la bolsa ahí. Okay. So here we are again. And now, of course, we have to spend uh, two or three minutes uh, checking for for bleeders. Huh? If we see any bleeder, we have to stop it because before morselation, we want to have a good visibility. That's capsular. You can tell very. Nicely, uh, Vane, sí. puede meter el ecógrafo. Sí. So before we finish, I'm going to show you uh, the transrectal ultrasound uh, image uh, of, and let's look at the sphincter again. You see, this is perfect mucosal preservation, and this is perfect mucosal preservation. You see, this is the sphincter. Huh? So to me, this is the most important uh, aspect, protecting the sphincter, so the patient will pee very well tomorrow morning. I will remove, here is the 5 p.m., 5 p.m., so the patient will keep a catheter and tomorrow morning we'll take it out and send him home. And uh, here is the UO, uh, which is safe. Here's the other UO. And uh, I think we're going to prepare for morselation. I don't see major bleeders, let's see anteriorly. Okay, this is anterior. Yeah, there's some small bleeders. It's a little bit irregular here. If you want to, to complete, let's say, the removal of a little bit of tissue that was left behind, you can perfectly do it at the end. This is the trimming, trimming phase. Uh, sometimes you have very beautiful planes and sometimes there's some cling ons some little uh, fragments of tissue that are hanging, so you can just take them out while you check your hemostasis. Huh? And I think this is it. Huh? I think this is it, beautiful. So let's move on now to, to morselation. Move on to more selection. I'm going to ask my nurse to help me, and this coordination is very important. I don't know if you can see the the external view. This is a small final bit of tissue. Okay, now it's completely free. You can have mucosal bleeders. You know, at the edge of the mucosa, sometimes you can get some mucosal bleeders that will obscure the visibility, but. Now, or tú con la tuya, Santi. Okay, so let's. Vamos a enseñarles. Ah, okay. Let's do the ultrasound. Let's do the ultrasound. Mira, José Luis. José Luis, enseñales la pantalla del de la del ultrasonido. Allí. We are starting the the transrectal ultrasound, so I can show you the transrectal. Por favor, mover la pantalla para que se vea bien. ¿No veis que está de lado la pantalla? Ahora, ok. Dele por favor a... Ah, ok, it's calibrating. Ok, so now, uh, dele un poquito a la rosca. Ah, ok. So you can see, this is the endoscopic, uh, sorry, the, the transrectal ultrasound view of what we have done. This is the cavity and the prostate. ¿eh? Venga, cógele. Cambia. And this is the longitudinal view. Huh? You see, we removed uh, all the adenoma anatomically respecting the sphincter. Okay, so let's morselate now. Ahora que mira, ahora que enseña el cambio de instrumentos. So, first of all, take the fiber out. 
Lisa in standby. And we're going to change the instrument. You can understand that uh, through the channel of the cystoscope, we cannot introduce the morselation blades. So we have to change the instrument. We have to change for a nephroscope or a morscope. And we will do a fast change so we don't decompress the bladder. So my nurse is helping me. This is what I meant about the teamwork. And now we have the nephroscope view and I'm introducing the, mor the piranha morselator. Okay, so very important. You never rotate the morselator like that. Okay? Can we see the... Podemos poner las imágenes de dentro? Okay, I want to show you the endoscopic image. Venga, que se está distendiendo la vejiga un poco. So, rules of morselation. Huh? Never rotate the morselator. Always looking up. Always looking up. Come to a point, so near the bladder neck here, for example, where you see the bladder, and use the suction pedal, and then take the tip of the morselator upwards, and then activate the morselation. Okay, so I will repeat this as many times as I need until also very important don't uh, don't uh, use the morselator very close to the lens this is a bad idea take it in at least you should you should see the richard wolf logo and then uh, because if you if you have the uh, this view if you have this view no, no está morcelando bien eh? morselation is not very good let's see why but you see, when you push the, the tip of the morselator blade inside, what happens is that uh, you can see on the sides, let's see if we start uh, engaging the, the piece uh, better. Now, for some reason, this morselation is not so comfortable. Let me get comfortable. Okay, so. Typically, when the suction is good, the, the piece uh, should engage very good. Now it's better. Here, you see that uh, when I'm morselating, I can see two triangles around the blade. Uh, at each side of the blade, there's a black uh, triangle. That means that I, I am looking at the bladder through these uh, small triangles. If I bring the morselation here, I only see adenoma and blade, you see, but if I keep it here, I can have more perspective. Uh, why is that important? Well, if you get close to the bladder, you see it starts looking pink. You don't want to activate the blades here because I can see the pink in my triangle. Huh? I, I want to work with uh, two black triangles around the, the piece. And I have to say that the best uh, the best improvement in, in, uh, more in technology for Holep has been the, the, the Wolf uh, fast morselator blades. Huh? You know, this is uh, amazing because even when the morselation is not optimal, now I think it's like 80%, it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, even when the morselation is not so fast because of uh, lack of suction or something, uh, it takes the tissue away very fast. So. We measured uh, our morselation efficiency after uh, many cases, and it's about 10 grams per minute on average, uh, 10 or 11 grams per minute on average. That means that you can morselate a 100 gram adenoma in 10 minutes. So it has shortened up a lot the, the, the duration of these operations. I don't know how long did it take to do this one. Of course, this is a a uh, teaching video, a teaching operation. So it takes a little bit longer than usual. But as I said, you can uh, look for my YouTube channel to check for other operations and you will see that it's not unusual that we can do 60 grams in 20, 25 minutes, 100 grams in 35, 40 minutes, something like that. So actually when we do a session that goes from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day, we can schedule up to five cases uh, sometimes. Of course, when we're going to do the monster prostates like 200 grams, uh, then we maybe do three or four cases. But uh, if we do regular size prostates, 100 grams, 
80 grams, 90 grams. Often we can do five cases in one evening, in one afternoon. And there you can see the morselation is working very well. We had a nice hemostasis, so we still can see very well. The importance of a fast morselation is also because when you start the morselation, uh, the visibility is good. The water, there's no proper washout. And uh, so the visibility can degrade. Huh? So every minute, the visibility will be a, a little bit worse. Okay, one thing we can do if, if the tissue is going away is we can come to the fossa and try to morselate inside the fossa. This is an advanced uh, trick. As you see now that the piece of tissue is clashing with the walls of the fossa, and I'm keeping my morselator totally still. Huh? I don't move it. I'm not getting anywhere close to the, to the walls of the fossa, but we were able to morselate the piece inside the fossa very nicely. This is very safe, let's say, for the bladder. And this is also uh, a way to keep the piece engaged to the morselator blade. Huh? Okay, so let's see if we have any other piece in the bladder. You see how visibility is degrading. So we were lucky that we had a fast morselator to, 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 do, to do the job. Huh? There we are, catheter.